synthetic multiplication. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to multiply polynomials using synthetic multiplication. And this is just a method for multiplying polynomials that focuses on the coefficients and constant terms. So we're just looking at the numbers as we go through our steps, and then we take care of the variables at the end. Here's an example of multiplying two polynomials together. We have a binomial in the first set of parentheses and trinomial in the second set of parentheses. Before we set it up for a synthetic multiplication, we need to make sure that the terms are written from highest degree to lowest degree for each polynomial. So looking at the binomial there, we start off with a first degree term. It has a degree of 1 because there's no exponent written with the x. And then we have a constant term that has a degree of 0. So going from first degree term down to zero degree term, it's going from highest to lowest. So that one's all set. Okay, now looking at the trinomial, the first term there has a degree of three. The next term has a degree of two, but we're missing a first degree term. We skip straight down to the constant term that has a degree of zero. So we need to fill in that space for the term that has a degree of one. So now we have that missing term filled in with a zero for the coefficient. Okay, now we can write this over to set it up for our multiplication. It's always a little easier to write the longest polynomial first. So we'll copy that over and then the shorter polynomial goes underneath. And we set it up for multiplication just like we would multiply any two numbers together. As we mentioned earlier, the goal of synthetic multiplication is to focus just on those numbers first, the coefficients and constant terms. So let's get rid of all those variables. Okay. Now we can multiply these numbers together just like we would a regular multiplication problem. So we start with the last digit in the second row. That plus 3 will multiply it by each number that was from the first polynomial. Okay, so we have 3 times 7 gives us 21 all the way to the right. Then we work our way over to the left. 3 times 0 gives us 0. 3 times negative 6, negative 18. And 3 times 2 gives us 6. Now we're going to do the same thing with the 5. Multiply that 5 times each term from that top polynomial. So we have 5 times 7, which gives us 35. And notice that when we start a new row there, we move over one space to the left. Just like when you're multiplying numbers together, each time you start a new row, you have to move one space to the left. So same process here. Okay, now we can continue. 5 times 0 gives us 0. 5 times negative 6 gives us negative 30. And then 5 times 2 gives us 10. Okay, now we can add these two rows of numbers together. We'll start all the way to the right with the plus 21. Just bring that down. Now move to the left to that next column, adding the 0 and 35. Gives us 35. And then we keep going, adding each column until we're all complete. Now we're finished multiplying. All that we're missing are the variables. So we need to add those x's back in. So how do we know what exponent we should have with each of the numbers here? Well, the great thing is that when we set up this problem, we made sure that our polynomials started with the highest degree term and then went down to the lowest degree term, and we made sure that no terms were missing. So now we know that with the numbers that we have here in our answer, they also go from highest degree term down to lowest. So the 21 that we have all the way at the end there, that's our zero degree term. So it doesn't get a variable, it's just a constant, just a number. So when we move to the left, to the plus 35, that's going to be our first degree term. So we'll just write an x in. Okay. Now we move to the negative 18, that'll be our second degree term. So we give it an x squared, and then keep moving over, x to the third, and x to the fourth. Now we have our final answer, 10x to the fourth minus 24x cubed minus 18x squared plus 35x plus 21. So now it's your turn to try. Find the product of these two polynomials 
by using synthetic multiplication. If you need more time, you can pause the video. Okay, let's see how you did. Here's how we would set up this problem for synthetic multiplication. The trinomial that we started with didn't have a second degree term, so we needed to add a 0x squared in there to fill in that space. Now let's get rid of those variables, and now we can multiply these numbers. First we'll start multiplying that negative 1 in the second row times each term from the first polynomial. Okay, now we multiply the 2 times each term in the first polynomial. Add these two rows together. And now we can fill in our variables, starting to the right and working our way to the left. So the last number is our zero degree term. We don't give it a variable at all. Then we add our x, x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth. And we are finished. There's our final answer. So you just learned how to multiply polynomials using synthetic multiplication. Great job.